Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. This is Module 5.6, and we're looking at the physical properties of models and of materials. So, so far we've talked about some more advanced modeling techniques. We've also talked about calculating volumes and resulting densities uh, and weights or masses associated with a volume within a, a solid model, and a few other things, surface area and doing some computations that data. So now we're into the solid modeling and we've made some different models and what we've done is provided you with uh, three different models for you to analyze. So I'm just going to talk about a little bit of what, what you can analyze within your SOLIDWORKS models. So you'll see open on my screen uh, I've got a sample part. This happens to be part three from the exercise uh, and it's a solid model with a V loft cut similar to what we did for our exercise in class. Uh, the way that you can go about assigning different attributes to the model uh, within SOLIDWORKS is you will right click on the part name and you can see that I can come down here and select my material. Here I can I have a few drop downs that are just there and I can also edit my material. So if I come in and go to edit my material you'll see that I've got a whole different range of materials here. So if I go to other metals and let's say I make this out of pure gold. It's going to tell you uh, what units you can make your material properties out of. Uh, so let's go ahead and do English units. Uh, it'll give you some strength uh, calculations. So when we talk about elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, shear modulus, mass density, tensile strength, those are all things that uh, mean different engineering terms that we won't cover right now in class. Uh, we talked about mass density, what that means, and that will be applied directly here. So I'll go ahead and apply that to the model. And you're going to see that when I do that, I get a color in addition to some different attributes. The attributes I can view by coming over here to the Evaluate tab, clicking on that, and I can come in and I can choose Mass Properties. Within Mass Properties, I'll now see the density that's used in these calculations, the resultant mass in grams, the volume in cubic centimeters, the surface area in square centimeters, and then the center of mass. So what the center of mass is, can be best described as is where is this, where does this object's mass lie as a point? In other words, if I put a pencil underneath the bottom of this model, where would I have to put the pencil to balance it? If I put a pencil on the side and flip the model up, where would I have to put a pencil to balance it? And if I put a pencil in the middle. So you'll see right here in the middle of this, uh, I've got my little indicator that shows uh, where my uh, center of masses are. And you can see that this is the axis of inertia right here. LX, LY, and LZ. It's telling you that the center of mass in relation to the origin that you've provided the model is at the zero point in X, minus 0.37 in Y, and minus 0.08 in Z. So that's good if the model's made out of gold. Let's go ahead and do one other option here. So let's go back into our model, right click, material, and edit my material. And this time I'm going to make this out of, let's make it out of plastic. And we're gonna make it out of nylon, 610. You'll see that it's turned white, relatively clear, and if I come up to my mass properties, lo and behold, my mass has changed, my surface area and volume have not changed. So there was the mass of it in plastic, so we're looking at 200 grams, and again we'll look at the mass of it in gold. Two thousand seven hundred twenty-three grams. So that's how we look at the physical properties in SolidWorks, and just a few of the physical properties that SolidWorks will display.